All right. Well, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you have, if you turn me this morning to the book of Luke, chapter number 16, I've run around and prayed and dodged, and the Almighty said, I want this preached. I said, all right, Lord. I've been at it long enough. No, you can't run hard enough to get away. you got to do what God called you to do. Luke chapter 16, verse 19. Before I preach this, I'll give it a title. The Abyss. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass, the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom, and cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Now note carefully what follows in verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to you, that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, lest he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. He said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Father, bless this book and give me unction to preach it this morning. In thy holy name, amen. You can be seated. I'll be coming back to verse number 26 about the great gulf fixed between the two of them. And all indications is that there was a bottomless gulf that separated paradise, Abraham's bosom, from the place called hell, a general terms called Hades. You've ever heard a preacher use Hades? It simply means the unseen state of the dead. The Old Testament counterpart is Sheol. But remember this, no one definition is going to tell you what Hades is about. It's about the abode of the saved and the lost. Remember, it's two parts, two compartments that make it. Thomas Hobbes, political philosopher, he said, I say again, if I had the whole world at my disposal, I would give it to live one day, he said. I'm about to take a leap into the dark. Now, this is something that comes upon all of us. I want you to think about this. Those of you who know history of our country, you know about Thomas Paine. He was a philosopher. He was an atheist. And he was a writer in American colonies said, quote, Stay with me for God's sake. I cannot bear to be left alone. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, God, what have I done to suffer so much? What will become of me hereafter? I will give worlds if I had them. Now, here's the book that he wrote. He wrote that the age of reason had never been published. Oh, Lord, help me. Christ, help me. No, don't leave. Stay with me. Send a child to stay with me, for I'm on the edge of hell here alone. If ever the devil had an agent, I have been that one. Now this is, these are his words. I'm not putting words in his mouth. He lived in the time of the founding fathers in the early ages of our republic. Sir Thomas Scott, Chancellor of England, quote, until this moment I thought there was neither a God nor hell. Now I know and feel they're both, and I'm doomed to perdition by the just judgment of the Almighty. Can you imagine yourself coming down and you call yourself an atheist or an agnostic? Someone's by your bedside holding your hand. They've come as far as they can come with you, but that's what they can do as far as they can come. 
because you will leave them behind and you will go out into eternity. Voltaire, history, tells the story of the renowned atheist. Voltaire, one of the most aggressive antagonists of Christianity, wrote many things to undermine the church and once said of Jesus Christ, quote, curse the wretch. God help that I have to even say that. In 20 years, Christianity will be no more, he boasted. My single hand will destroy the edifice it took 12 apostles to rear. So you made your brag, Voltaire. Then at death, he said, I am abandoned by God and man. He said to his physician, Dr. Fulkin, I will give you half of what I am worth if you will give me six months of life. And when he was told this was impossible, he said, then I shall die and go to hell. His nurse said, for all the money in Europe, I wouldn't want to see another unbeliever die. All night long, Voltaire cried for forgiveness and cried and cried and found none. Anton LaVey, bringing you up to contemporary. Satanic Bible author, high priest of the satanic worship religion. His dying words were, quote, oh my, oh my, what have I done? There's something very wrong. This is one of the most controversial statements that you'll ever find. Do your own research into it. But apparently a lot more is coming out to support this, that he did truly say this on his deathbed. Then there are those, many of those, many of them who say, I'm in flames. I'm in the flames. The flames are engulfing me. I'm in flames. And they cry out as they leave this world that they are in flames. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in Mark chapter 9, verse 43, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than to having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. The Lord Jesus said in Mark chapter number 9, verse 48, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Our Lord Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13, verse 42, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Is that what awaits you? Is it await you? Do you know what awaits you? Wake up. Do you know what is, is awaiting you right now? Do you have any idea? There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And he said, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. He said, yea, I forewarn you, fear him. And we fear everything in the world, but almighty God, I wonder if Solomon, as he sat in his palace, could hear the screams of the babies as they rolled into Moloch's belly. I wonder if he could hear them. Do you suppose Almighty God can hear the silent scream of aborted babies? You suppose he hears them? You suppose the Lord has kept record of 60 million babies that have been butchered in this country? This is a bloody place if you're a baby. Every single pro-abortion, every last one of them should be wearing a shirt today that says, Thank you, Mama, for not killing me. I mean, do they, do, they, do they treasure life? Are you watching me? Are you listening? This is a reality. Who speaks for them? 60 million of them. Who speaks for them? Don't come across and use the word love with me. I hold it in contempt when you tell me you don't love anything but yourself. That's all you love. You don't know what the word means. And you butcher your babies. And then you get up and your politicians say, I believe we ought to be able to love who we want to love. Oh, shut up. You're nothing but contemptuous garbage. You're here today and gone tomorrow. Amen. Enjoy your time in the sun for you'll quickly pass from this place. And where you go, God help. Amen. I guess you can tell that I've had it up to here with modern philosophy and politicians. Don't hand me this garbage. The abyss. The abyss. Now, I've preached about hell. The Bible talks about hell. Tartarus, Tartarao is the word. That's the lowest hell. Then you have Hades. 
In Greek, it's Hades, Hades, which is, of course, the Greek word and translated hell. It's the place of the abode of the dead, both good and bad. It was, but we'll get you up to date. And the Old Testament counterpart is Sheol. Jacob said, I shall go down to hell, weeping and wailing, mourning the death of my son. And so we find these words in the Bible. Don't ever let anybody try to mess your mind up and twist scripture and tell you there is no hell. What is Christ talking about? One of these scriptures I quoted you, what's he talking about? If the grave is hell, he's talking about a place. Just if nothing else, get that a hold, get a hold of that this morning. Hell is a reality. It's right down here. The Bible talks about the abyss. It uses that word abyssos. That's the Greek word. And we transliterate it literally into English and we say abyss. A lot of words are transliterated, simply taken from Greek or Latin or whatever it is, and we just bring it over into English and say that word. And, uh, for example, deacon. The Greek word is diakonin. You've transliterated it. The word translated means servant. So hell is something that is a reality in the Bible. But now I want you to go a little further with me. Revelation chapter number 9 and verse number 1. Revelation 9, 1. The fifth angel sounded. I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit. See that word bottomless pit? Bottomless is abyssos. That's the Greek word for there's no bottom to it. It is a pit. It is, it is, a, it is a, an abyss. It is falling into the darkness. There's no end to where you're going to fall. And he opened the bottomless pit, arose a smoke out of the pit. As the smoke of a great furnace, the sun, the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. The apostle John wrote the book of Revelation and I believe the book of Revelation now is going to, become, it's going to be, begin to unfold before our very eyes. I really do. I really do. In Revelation chapter number 11 and verse number 7, it says, And when they had finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So what is this abyss? What are we talking about here? Is it hell? Is it Sheol? Is it Tartarus? What is it? The abyss. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 8 and verse number 30. And here he's dealing with some demons. And demons are smart. The fact is they know more about the spirit, spirit world than most of us do. And the truth of the matter is they know who Christ is. Regardless of a bunch of reverends in the pulpit today, they don't. But the demons know who he is. In Luke chapter number 8 and verse 30, Jesus asked him saying, What is thy name? And he said, legion. And a legion, of course, you get different figures. Anywhere from four to 6,000 was a Roman legion. They say time changed. So you're talking about thousands. Jesus asked, saying, what is thy name? He said, legion, because many devils were entered into him. Now watch this. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss, into the deep. See that? Into the deep. It doesn't say hell. It says into the deep. We don't want to go there. Not before our time. Have you come to judge us, they said. So they knew who he was and they knew his authority. There was never any doubt in their mind that the Lord Jesus Christ was the second person of the Trinity. He was almighty God in flesh walking among them. Never any doubt. When he spoke, they listened. So the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 7. I talked about this Wednesday night and I want to read it for you this morning. I want you to notice how these scriptures begin to complement each other. This is quite a remarkable thing. Romans chapter 10 verse 7. Who shall descend into the abyss, into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. It is translated the deep here. He said, what, what are you talking about? Romans chapter number 10 has to do, it's connected with your salvation. Who shall ascend into the heavens? Who shall descend into the deep? In plain words, from the lowest to the highest, who can do that? And note carefully the wording. It is not that God puts anybody anywhere. It is that that individual has power to descend into the deep, rise into heaven. That's the issue going on here. The power to rise into heaven is based upon his righteousness. 
Who can come? Who dares approach God on his own righteousness? He does. And he accepted him because he lived a sinless, perfect life. And the writer of the book of Romans is telling you, compare your righteousness with his righteousness. Guess who loses? You feel like you're righteous today? You feel like you're good enough to get to heaven? Do you think you're living a good life? You're keeping all the commandments? You got all six. How many of you know how old 613? Well, the mitzvot that the Jews claim are commandments from the Old Testament. Nobody does. Commandments don't save you. Keeping the law cannot save you. But what he's trying to do is to shake you and say, look, here is one that by his own righteous life, he can ascend into the presence of God. Then he says this. He said, but not only that, he descended into the abyss. Note carefully the wording. Romans chapter number 10. Into the deep. And I begin to think about that. Now what's going on here? The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter number 2, quoting the Old Testament, thou wilt not leave my soul, his soul, where? In hell. But could it be that hell is only part of the abyss? Could it be that the abyss is large enough to hold Hades and Tartarus and everything else that may have to do with judgment? That's a thought, isn't it? For example, when Abraham looked over at Lazarus, he said there is an abyss. There is a depth. There is a, the Greek word is kosma. We get our word chasm. You know what a chasm is? In other words, it is insurmountable. There's no depth to it. There's no end to it. He said that is separating us, which of course brings up some other issues. We'll get them this morning. But it has to do with movement. It has to do with your body. It has to do with what you're going on with and all that. But the bottom line is this. I can't go over there to where you are. It's too deep down here. That's what he said. That's to put it in modern terminology. I can't do it. I can't cross this barrier. I'm on top of a mountain here. You're on top of a mountain there. And between us is a void. He called it a great gulf fixed. Does that not help you begin to understand then that here is Hades, here is hell. It's in a void. It's in a abyss. Now think of this. When the Lord Jesus Christ, let's read it. It's always better to have the book, isn't it? Turn to Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter number 4, verse 8. Ephesians 4, 8. The Apostle Paul says this, Wherefore he saith, When he ascended upon high, See the ascension? Who can ascend into heaven? Question asked in Romans 10. Who can do this? All right. Do you believe he ascended into the presence of God by his own righteousness? Yeah. Buddy, I do. I'm first in line. You better believe I believe that. Yeah. Now look at this. Wherefore he saith, When he ascended upon high, he led to captivity captive. Where to get them? Well, the, here's where. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? See this general term? See the general term? So there'd be no doubt in anyone's mind, he didn't go over there where the flames are burning. There are other people out here talking about where Christ went into hell and he went and burned in hell. No, he didn't. He, paid for, he didn't pay for your sins in hell. He didn't pay for your sins in the heart of the earth. He paid for your sins on the cross. Amen. Amen. It was the blood of Christ at the cross at Calvary that washes your sins away. And when you deviate from that, you get off into apostasy and heresy. Amen. But note carefully, now that he ascended, what is it? But he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. I can imagine, of course, you can get carried away. <laughs> I can imagine, though, that when the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, he gave himself to the Father, he ascended his spirit into thy hands. I commend my spirit, the, the Son said at the cross, Father, into thy hands. But his soul, Acts chapter number 2, was not left in hell. His soul descended down. So maybe he had to descend down through the abyss to get to Hades, to get to the place of the saved. 
So why would he do that? Well, maybe the demon powers of hell were all gathered on both sides and they watched him as he came down and they thought to themselves, my, 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 what arrogance. Is he going to come down here where we are? He's going to come into our very midst? That little baby that was born in Bethlehem of Judea? You mean he just died on a cross? Died. He died. And he's just like all the rest of them. His soul is coming down. And he's going to come down into our midst? Yeah. <laughs> because he's a lot bigger than them. And he went right straight into Abraham's bosom. And there in Abraham's bosom, he made the call, clarion call, the loud call. It's finished. It's finished. You don't have to wait any longer. I'm here. It's over. Let's go. And he didn't have to say twice, let's go. They were ready. And with them, he ascended. This is, begins his ascent. His ascent started there. You see, the ascent did not stop until he was seated at the right hand of the Father. There were some stages involved in the ascent, but the ascent started there. You see, he didn't have to climb out of there. He didn't need any extra power. He didn't need any, anything. He ascended because they couldn't hold him. They had no legal authority over him. They couldn't do anything with him. And up he went. And the demons and all the, all the demons of hell, every, every wicked, vile spirit watched him as he ascended up above into the light. And on the third day, up they went. And he took them with him up into glory and presented them to the Father. But then not only did he ascend out of this place, he ascended into the presence of the Father and the cherubim and the seraphim and the archangels and the angels said, now what's going on here? <laughs> As he came up through their midst, he continued to rise. Nothing could stop him. And he would not be finished until it was complete. And to complete it meant that he sat down and was accepted by the Father. Because this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The sacrifice of the Father for all of us. And there he sat down, and when he did, he sent back. The moment he sat down, he had the authority now to send back apostles and prophets and preach preachers and teachers and all of the gifts of the Spirit and everything that we need for the organization and the power and the authority of the church of the living God. That was sent back based upon what happened to him when he sat down at the right hand of the Father. A great gulf. So you die today. So I die today. So this is my last day on earth. I hope, if it is my last day on earth, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm able to grab that little old sweet thing sitting on that back row and give her one last kiss and say to her, hey, I'll meet you by the river. <laughs> no fear. No fear, this may be, my, may be my last one, who knows. But I know where I'm going. Yeah, I know where I'm going, folks. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going home. I'm going home to be with the Lord. And I don't know, I mean, I'm going, two days from now, I'm going to be 78 years old. I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> no sense getting mad and stomping around and carrying on. 78 years. The salvation of your soul, therefore, is directly associated with his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Amen. I want to give you a glimpse into the spiritual world. Will you listen carefully to what I'm going to read to you now? Now, this is the kind of stuff that comes to our YouTube channel. This came to our YouTube channel. This is a glimpse into the spiritual world. Now, either you're going to believe this or you're not. If you're a hardened atheist and agnostic, then you're going to pass it off. You're not going to believe it. Otherwise, you're in for a blessing. A four-year-old boy named Colton had a near-death experience. Months after he recovered, he asked his father if he had a grandfather named Pop. His father said that he did, but Pop died when his father was about four years of age. 
far long before Colton was ever born. Colton said that he got to stay with Pop when he was in heaven and that Pop was nice. Colton was shown a picture of Pop when Pop was 62. Colton did not recognize Pop because Pop was wearing glasses and Colton said that nobody wears glasses in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Colton was later shown a picture of Pop when Pop was 29. Colton was able to recognize the younger Pop in the picture. Later, Colton told his mother that he had two sisters. His mother told him that he only had one sister. Colton responded that his mother had a baby die in her tummy. His mother was shocked because she had never told Colton that she had had a miscarriage. His mother asked him, what her name was. Colton said that he did not have a name. She did not have a name because his parents never named her. This was true. So she was testing him because they did not know the sex of the child. I remember those days before ultrasound. Colton stated that his sister in heaven could not wait for his parents to get to heaven. Colton also indicated that he had met Jesus and that Jesus had red markers on his hands and feet. However, none of the pictures of Jesus that his parents showed him looked like Jesus. Listen carefully now. None of the pictures of Jesus that his parents showed him looked like Jesus till he saw a painting done by an artist, Prodigy, who also had a near-death experience and saw Jesus when she was four years old. Colton told his parents that her painting looked like Jesus. Now you believe that or you don't. You ought to get on YouTube and read what some of these hospice nurses have to say. How many of you know what a hospice nurse is? Many of you do, you know what I'm talking about. Sure you do. They're there with the people when they pass away. They hear them, they see them, and they, they hear about what they see. Just do a little research on your own. For the sake of time, I can't cover all of that this morning. I believe every word of it. No problem at all. You mean you believe in near-death experiences? Have you ever read 1 Corinthians 12? You ought to read it. Knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body or out, cannot tell. Such an one called up to the third heaven. Sure I do. Believe the Bible. Now where are you going? Where are you going, folks? This may be my last, I don't know how many thousands of messages I've preached. I don't have any idea. And God doesn't told me I'm leaving today. I know that. I don't know that. I told him the other day, I said, Lord, just soon you didn't tell me. <laughs> just when I get ready to go, come get me. We'll get it over with. I won't have to worry about some date. Amen. I mean, how would you like to know that next Tuesday you're leaving here at 7 o'clock in the morning? Raise your hand. All right. No hands. But I know where I'm going. Do you know where you're going? Let's be practical for a moment. How many of you believe that you're going to live forever? I'm talking about in this life, in this flesh. No, you're not. So you're going to pass on. And life's unfair. Some of you may be murdered. Some of you may die in a car wreck. Some of you may get some, you know, heinous disease, and you're, and you're gone in three or four months. You may have a heart attack, stroke, a lot of things, a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things can take us out of this world. The body is really pretty pretty uh, fragile truth is are you ready do you believe there's a abyss down there yes now let me tell you this let's get it straightened up on doctrine Abraham's bosom's not there anymore those saints that were there they're gone they're in the presence of the Lord amen they're in the presence of the Lord where are you going just you bow your head for a minute Father, I've preached what you put on my heart, Lord. I've got peace with it now. I'm done. I pray you'd take it. If there's somebody in here that needed to hear that, would you raise your hand right now and say, Preacher Lawson, won't you pray for me because God's waking me up. I, I have to confess, I haven't really thought much about leaving the world, but I am going to. God bless you. I see that hand back there. I see that hand right here. Yes, sir, I see those hands.
Here's another hand. God bless you. I see that hand. Yes, sir, I do. God bless you back there. I'm the minister of righteousness, folks. I preach righteousness. I'm not righteous, but I'm a minister of it. For the righteousness of Christ, God bless you here. That's who the righteous one is. Not me, it's him. And I'm preaching him this morning to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, folks. Sinless, perfect son of God. Bless his righteous name. Do you know him? Do you know where you're going? If you don't, why don't you come down here to the front? We'll be glad to meet with you. Open the Bible and show you how to be saved. It's not a complicated thing. God didn't, God didn't write the Bible to deceive you or confuse you. No, sir. Would you raise your hand and say, I want you to pray for me, Preacher Lawson? Pray for me. God bless you. God bless you back here in the back. God bless you. These hands are going up everywhere in here this morning. Thank God. Thank God. God bless you here. Hallelujah. God bless you here. Amen. 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 I know now why God wanted me to preach what I preached this morning. The abyss. You don't want to go into that. The Antichrist, the beast, is going to come right up out of that abyss. He's going to come right on this earth. And every kind of demonic being, filthy, vile, corrupt spirit being, is going to come right out of the bottomless pit, the abyss. They're coming. They're coming. And I think we've already begun to get a preview of it. Father, bless your word. I pray for the souls whose hands went up this morning. Father, it's quiet in here, and I'm thankful for that. I am very thankful for it. There, you're, you're here. Thank you. You're here. There's no doubt. You're here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, I'm glad that I can be the messenger. I've done what you call me to do. I'm fulfilled. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. I've done what you've called me to do. Now bless your word as it goes forth. In your holy name I pray. Amen.